Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Let's get crafting. This DIY is super easy to do. You're gonna take one of these wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree and one and a half of the nautical ropes. You're gonna cut off this twine that they have on there because we're not gonna be needing that. And then we're gonna simply start by taking our rope and gluing it on the bottom but where it's hanging over the edge a little bit because we're gonna come around on the top side to create another layer and that's gonna create a really beautiful tray with this heart. As you take your hot glue, just keep following along the shape of the heart, making sure that you're going over that edge just a little bit and then just keep going along the shape, making sure you put enough glue so it really binds to the heart and then when you get to the very end of the heart, the point, you're going to glue it to the side of that other rope and then you're gonna come up around and bring it around the top of the other side of the heart. Then you're gonna just simply repeat the same process. You're going to add some more glue and then put down the rope. Now you can see here that I'm untwisting it just a little bit to make it a little bit thicker because in a minute we're going to put glue in between the two ropes. I don't wanna see the wood heart coming between the two ropes. We wanna make sure that's sandwiched in there really nicely so all you see when you look on the side of this tray is going to be the rope. Then when you get back down to the point of the heart, go ahead and cut off the extra, twist everything into place with some hot glue and make sure it's nice and sealed. Now here I am coming back in with that hot glue and I'm just sandwiching those ropes together, making sure it's a nice clean finish so you don't see that heart in between. Then you're gonna take that other half of the rope, this is where I said one and a half ropes, and you're gonna go around one more layer around the heart. This rope is long enough to be able to go around the heart two times, but you need a half a rope to be able to finish the complete thing. And then you're gonna have some handles that you're just gonna simply glue on one side and then on the other side. This tray is adorable and you can put whatever you want on it and display it throughout the springtime. Today's video is the kit of the month projects that goes along with my kit for February. I am selling kits now with all of these dollar items from the Dollar Tree. I know it's so hard for people to be able to find some of these items and some of you don't even have stores next to you. Please keep in mind that I'm only shipping within the US just because of shipping costs and worrying about the safety of a box arriving. Now today I am teaming up with Jessica. I sent her one of the boxes and she has also made a ton of projects to inspire you with the box. I will be linking Jessica's video down below in my description box. Make sure you go over and check her out. You are going to love her. She has been one of my longtime friends here. She's so talented and I just adore her so much. And if you're new coming over from Jessica's channel, welcome. My name is Heidi Sambal and this is my DIY channel I post on Tuesdays and Fridays. If you were not one of the people who were able to purchase the box because they've sold out or maybe you just weren't ready to purchase one and commit to it yet, no worry there's going to be another box next month so keep an eye out for that. This DIY is going to be using the flowers from my February kit box, some rope, some popsicle sticks, one of these garden tags, and this bamboo cutting board. Friends, I am obsessed with popsicle sticks, mainly because they're easy to cut with a pair of scissors and you can do some of the most amazing things with these things by just cutting them and putting them together in a particular pattern. So here you can see that I cut off the tops and the bottoms. I put 12 on each of the sides, the long side of the bamboo cutting board, and then eight on the shorter end. Now we're gonna simply take the sticks add some hot glue and we're going to go all around this entire board. Now I took my time here. You can see this is my real speed that I'm going at. I want to make sure you can see that this is not a race. It's always better to just put them on really slow and take your time. Plus I found this really therapeutic to do, but that might just be me. Once I had all my sticks glued on and they were nice and sturdy and straight as I wanted them to get, then I went back in with my staple gun and I stapled them down to the bamboo board. This bamboo board is a really sturdy piece, so it's really allowing me to staple into it and allow the sticks to be nice and secure. 
Now, once I went all the way around, the bamboo board has a rounded corner. So I'm coming back in with a shorter stick than the original ones I used. And I'm just lining that up on the inside. Now, if I could do this part again, I think I would probably put the sticks on the outside versus the inside so I could staple it on. So that's just something to keep note of. And then when I went to the top, I'm adding some more popsicle sticks. This is going to really straighten out the box at this point because you're gonna notice that they're going all over the place. And as I put on this extra stick, it really does straighten out the whole box and it makes it just look so farmhouse chic. Once I went all the way around the whole box, I was then able to move on to painting. Now I didn't want to paint the bamboo part because I really love the color of that wood. So anytime I accidentally got paint on the bamboo, I went ahead and just wiped it off with a wipey and made sure I cleaned that part to make sure the wood stayed really pretty and noticeable. I really love the wood with the white. I thought it looked so beautiful together. Now this 3D wreath ring form is super popular but the shape is also perfect to be able to turn into some handles for my basket that I'm making. So I took the smallest ring and then I'm just gonna cut it in half. I also cut off the little nubs that were on it that hold the whole thing together with my wire cutters. And then once I cut that in half at the, the halfway point of the circle, I'm now taking my crocodile. This is one of my favorite tools. I'm gonna to link this and my staple gun because people ask me about it all the time. It'll be linked down below in my description box. I'm just simply going around and I'm just punching holes. It goes through metal, wood, plastic. This thing goes through everything. I love this tool so much. Now I'm adding on some hot glue and I'm gonna come in with my nautical rope and I'm going to not put glue where the holes are because we're going to be putting the wire through that part in just a minute. So make sure you can still see the hole and be able to get that wire through there. But go ahead and go all the way around the top of the box and then the bottom of the box. There was something about this that made this feel very French farmhouse country chic. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm making that up in my head, but I loved having the rope on there. I just thought it added a really pretty texture and it made it look more high end. So once I had all the rope all twisted into place nicely, I came back in with my wire handle and you can see here that I'm using my pliers and then I'm just simply working it in and twisting the piece up so that it's all bound on there together. And it's so fun because these handles actually are functional where you can pull them open so you can put stuff inside of it and then pull them back closed so you can hold it. And then to finish the look, I'm gonna take this little garden tag and I'm just gonna hot glue that right on after popping off that stick. And then at this point, you're ready to display it and use it however you want in your home. This DIY is super simple and these heart grapevine wreaths, they're like mini wreaths, but they're grapevines is what they're calling them at the Dollar Tree. These are the cutest thing they came out with this whole Valentine's Day season. I love these hearts. I'm obsessed with them. So I thought this would be the cutest thing to turn into a, a cute banner. You can honestly do anything you want with these, but I just love how they looked all strung up together. I took some gingham ribbon, bound them together, and then now I'm going to add on some roses, some of the greenery, and a bow. I thought putting these in between the hearts would look really darling, and it's super simple to do. Easy project without spending a lot of time on it. So I went ahead and just cut the greenery down to size that I needed. And I also love these flowers. These are also new this season. I love them so much. They're so cute. I love how dainty the flowers are. And then I added my greenery, my bow, my heart. And then on the end, I'm gonna take a long piece of this ribbon. I'm gonna fold it over just like I did to all the halfway points in between the hearts. Glue that little part down, and then I'm gonna string on some wooden beads. Now these wooden beads are not in this kit, but I know a lot of us have these because they've been so popular for so long. I will link mine where I get them. I buy mine on Amazon. 
I'll link that down below so if you're interested in where I get my wooden beads you can find them there but I love using wooden beads and I thought this would be a really pretty touch at the end of this darling little garland that you can hang up somewhere in your home so once you've got that knot on there you can see I folded it in half and knotted it and then I cut off the extra and glue into place If you haven't heard, I am doing something new here on my channel where I am doing a big giveaway every single month. The giveaway for this month is a Dremel tool kit. I got this for Christmas and I love it. I'm going to be using it a lot here on my channel. This is the video where the giveaway is where you're going to need to go to leave a comment. And with inside that video, you're also going to see a little sneak peek reveal of my craft room a DIY challenge update of when the next one is going to be posting because I switched the date on that. And there's also a contest that I am now starting a new series on my channel. I am searching for channels, creators on YouTube that have subscribers from 5,000 to 19,999 to submit an audition for that contest. Everything is linked in that video down below in the description box. If you go down there and watch that video, it'll tell you everything you'll need to know about all the things I just shared, the giveaway, the contest, and all the other stuff. This DIY, we are gonna be using this heart wreath form and then some fabric that I have on hand. Now this fabric is not in the kit, obviously, but anybody that has fabric on hand, this is a really cute one to try because I'm sure if you're crafty, you probably have a bunch of fabric laying around, or you can even use old clothes that are getting ready to go out for donations. I use things like that all the time, even a sheet. You can use an old uh, fitted or top sheet. You can also use that to be able to cut up and make one of these with. So this project is super simple. You saw that earlier I cut a little slit into the fabric and then I ripped all the way down so that I can make a whole bunch of these little rags which is why it's called a rag wreath and i'm going to just simply tie on the most neutral color that i have first so i have a lot of this tan taupey color i'm going to go all the way around the whole heart form once i've completed going all the way around it's going to look like a hot mess at this point even when i was doing it i was like mm, i don't know about this project <laughs> maybe this should not be something i'm showing and even my husband walked in the room was like uh, Heidi, that's a bit of a mess. But at this point, I went to the next light color, which was a creamy white, and then I started adding in the pink. This is where it is super, super important to get the shape. You're going to take your iron that you have at home, and you're going to iron down these pieces in the direction you want them to go. Then, to make sure it doesn't shift over time with it being wherever you place it, I'm adding little bits of hot glue here and there to kind of keep things clustered into the right shape that we want to keep the wreath from looking like it's starting to look sad over time. <laughs> but the honest truth is, is as these wreaths get older and older, they just get prettier because it's meant to look very shabby farmhouse. And I just love it so much. So you can see on one side, I've completed all the pink. Now I'm coming over to the other side and I'm adding in more. So I'm just pulling down the tan spots and then I'm adding in some pink and I really wanted the tan to be the primary color with a little bit of pink. As I kept adding in more, I just kept ironing things down into place. Now when you get to the top, the top is probably the most crucial part to make sure you get that part right. But again, this is really easy to do. It just takes some time to do because you're sitting here playing with it and fussing with it until you get it the way you like it. But when you get to the top, you want to make sure that you can see where it dips down and you can see where the arch of the heart is. So I'm really playing with the shape of this, adding in some hot glue, and then I'm going to flip it over on the back side and pull down around the pieces that are looking like they're sticking up too much. And then I'm going to take my iron and really flatten them to come down on the side like they're curving around the heart. At this point, it's looking really good. I played with a couple more little pieces just to make sure you can see the definition of the heart at the top. And then I decided it would be so pretty to add on some wooden beads. Again, I'm going to link these down below in my description box if you're interested in them. You honestly could use anything at the top. Then once you've got whatever you want to be able to hang this up on it, tie it onto that form and then hang it up somewhere inside or outside your home. I would definitely recommend inside probably more than outside.
This DIY is super simple. Inside your box, you're gonna get a couple of these darling little bags. Now, if you are one of the lucky ones was able to find a whole bunch of them, then I have another project that's coming on Tuesday where I'll be showing more of these in a project. But for now, I'm gonna show what you can do with these bags. I think you can cut them up and do all kinds of fun things with them, but I thought how sweet would it be to make these little treat bags to stick inside someone's lunch, maybe your spouse when they're going off to work and you just stick it in their lunch bag, or you could just stick it on someone's little pillow so that they can find it. So I'm just adding on some gingham ribbon, some greenery, and then some of these little flowers, just popping them all on there. And then you can fill it with whatever you want. Some little treats, a cute little sweet note for the person you're giving it to. I decided to also cut off that tag inside. Just thought I would note that too because I felt like that was really showing up when you could see it from the outside. And then here I am, I'm adding in some of these yummy Kit Kat raspberry treats that are really good and some kisses. If you haven't heard, I'm over on Instagram and I am always sharing daily updates of what I'm doing around my house, in my craft room. If you're interested, come on by and say hi. I also host a weekly Dollar Tree DIY tour challenge where everybody comes on there and they share their projects that they've made with Dollar Tree items. So come on by and say hi to me. I would love to be able to connect with you over there as well. For this project, we're going to be using one of these wooden houses, some more of these sticks, a cute little tag garden sign, a cardboard orange juice container, and some flowers. And then also some burlap that I had on hand, but you can use any fabric that you have. So we're going to push everything away and then we're going to start by painting the inside of that paper white. I don't want to use that cactus because I'm not going for that look. So I'm just going to cover that up with a couple coats of white paint and then I painted around the outside and the front surface, but I left the wood on the inside of the house that you can see there. Now we're going to take this upcycle orange juice container box and I'm going to cut it down a little bit lower because we're gonna be using this to create a garden bed in front of this little house. I thought this would be such a sweet little DIY to put on a bookshelf somewhere in your house. So I'm gonna cut the corners, two of the corners. I'm slitting down those corners and then you can see that the bottom is gonna drop down. Then I'm going to cut another slit along the bottom so that I can take this part off right here and then I can be able to fold in these pieces here. These are going to tuck inside the house and this bottom part where it's flat is going to be what the house sits on so that everything all comes together nice and neat. Now I don't want to be looking at orange juice containers on my shelves. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this burlap fabric. I doubled it up on that front band just to make sure you can't see through it. And then I'm just pulling it as tightly as I can, working it all the way around, cutting off the pieces to make sure I'm really concealing it. And then I'm also making sure that I have nice clean finishes by tucking in that burlap fabric in the spot so that it doesn't have a rough edge. I want it to be nice and smooth as much as possible. So you're gonna see me pulling it over nice and tight. Now here I am, I have put a whole bunch of glue on the inside of the house and I'm going to just nestle that right in there so the house is sitting on the base of the box and then these flaps are going inside so it has a nice clean finished look. And then anything extra that you feel is in the way you can always cut that off. I ended up just gluing most of it into place and now I'm going to take one of those long popsicle sticks and I made it skinny. I don't know how else to say this. <laughs> I cut it down the length of the stick because I wanted to have like a little picket fence look. So I did that three times, went around all three sides, and then now I'm cutting off a point at the top of the sticks to make it look like a picket fence, and then I'm also cutting them down to make sure they fit nicely on the box. This project definitely is more labor intensive, but I gotta tell you, if you have a lot of time on your hands and you think it's cute, it's definitely one to try because I had so much fun making this. And I know the exact place I'm going to put this in my house because I just think it's so darling. In fact, when I was making it, Miriam, my daughter, kept saying, can I put it in my room? 
<laughs> so maybe it'll end up in her room eventually. Now I'm going to take a piece of foam that I had on hand. I always like to do a combination of hot glue and E6000, especially because the orange box has a waxy texture to it and I wanted to make sure it really bound well to it. Then I took some flowers that I liked and I just put those all inside of that little box, stuck them all into the foam the way I wanted them to look, and then now I'm going to add a little tag to the front of that house. Once the tag was hot glued onto the front of the house, I went ahead and took some more of those sticks. I love these. I'm telling y'all, I use them all the time and I just think it's because it's the most affordable way to get a wood look without spending a ton of money and you can cut them really easy. So I cut them down to size and I'm going along the rooftop to make sure the back stays on nice and sturdy. I added some extra glue for a little bit of support back there. And then I'm going to cut two more to fit right at the top to create the peak of the house. Now at this point it is really coming together and looking so cute. And then I thought, hey, let's add a couple nails to the top to make it look like a little chimney, a little smokestack. And then I'm going to come back in with some white paint because I just can't help myself. I'm painting the roof gray and then white on the fence. And then at this point it's all ready to display in your home wherever you'd like. This DIY is going to be using this new shiplap heart, some paper, text paper, and some florals. It's really easy to do, and honestly, I think this ended up being my favorite project in this whole video because I just love how it turned out. It was so simple to make, and it was so pretty. So I'm just using some hot glue. I'm gluing down my paper onto the heart, and then I'm just pushing with my nail along the edge to rip it, coming back in with a piece of sandpaper, sanding along the edges to rough it and it gives a nice clean cut when you do it that way. This is the quick way to do it instead of having to trace a piece of paper and cut it out. This is one of my favorite tricks. Once I got all of the paper onto the heart, I came in with my dry brushing skills and I just dry brushed around the edge. I know this is debatable. Some people don't like the dry brushing bringing in that brown texture. You don't have to do that part. You can completely skip that part. And then at this point I'm adding in some of the greenery, some of the florals, and I think pink and yellow together are just so pretty. So that's kind of the color scheme I'm going with this one. Maybe this is the reason why I liked this one the most, I don't know, but I just love how this turned out. So I'm adding in some more greenery and three roses and then all of these little rose buds. They're just so adorable. I love this rose so much. It comes in a whole bunch of different colors. There is even a really pretty purple one and an ivory cream one. There are so many pretty colors on these little roses. Then once I had all of that situated how I liked, I went ahead and took the original string that was on it and I'm just going to thread on some beads at the top. And I am then, once I've got enough beads on it, I'm going to go ahead and stick that back into the hole so that I can hang it up somewhere in a home. I think this is going to go in my daughter's room because it's just so cute and it matches the colors of her room. Now, I don't know if you've heard, but I officially now have four channels on YouTube. I love it here so much that I thought, why not? So I have my Heidi Sommel paper crafting channel. This first video is coming out this next week, and I'm doing a Cricut giveaway for that month, for the month of February. I have a Heidi Sommel health channel where I'm tracking how much I'm losing and all that stuff, and I'm putting it out there to share with all of you. I have my Heidi Sommel home channel and then this channel that you're visiting today, my Heidi Sambol DIY channel. This is my lineup on the days I will be posting. I hope you will come on by and say hi. And don't forget to go over to the Paper Crafting channel and subscribe so you don't miss that giveaway when it first comes out this next week. Okay, this one might be my favorite DIY because I love these little houses. I know so many of you have had such a hard time trying to find these houses. 
I ended up purchasing them online for my kit because I wanted to make sure the people in the kit that purchased it were going to be able to get three of these houses, all three different sizes. So I found some inspiration a long time ago with these cute little houses that were made out of two by four logs or sticks two by fours. We're just going to say that and stick with that. And I'm going to be copying the inspiration of that with their color scheme. I found that on Pinterest a long time ago. So I painted one house a really pretty gray and another house white. And then I added the little windows. And now I'm coming back in with those sticks again, those popsicle sticks. And I'm going to cut two of them down to size to make little doors on the house. Now these houses can be used so many different ways, but I decided to use the back side because it really went along with the inspiration picture that I just fell in love with. So once I did that, I decided I needed some hearts. And this is again why I like these sticks. So I'm sketching on a half of a heart. I cut all the way across. And the trick is, is you want to cut off clean lines versus trying to round the corner. It'll splinter less and it'll allow you to be able to get the shape that you want. So once I had the half of the heart, I went ahead and flipped it over, traced it on again to make sure that they match up nicely with one another. And then I went ahead and followed the same steps to cut that out. Once I had it all cut out, I was able to glue it onto the top of my white house and they come together so perfectly so cute what an affordable way to be able to have a heart on hand for your spring and valentine's day themes that you're doing then i decided to paint it a creamy yellow i thought that would be really pretty and then i'm coming back in with a coral pink color i love coral pink so much i think it is such a pretty color so i'm just adding in some yellow to the pink that i had on hand and then i'm going to paint that on the door to make the door really stand out on this cute little house once I had that one painted, I moved back over to the other door. I took some brown paint, black paint, and then a little tiny bit of gray and some water to make a almost like a stain for my little sticks. And I'm just really carefully taking my time on that so I don't get it on anything I don't want it to get it on. And then I'm coming back in with some nails and I'm just going to hammer that into the top. I put two on one of the houses and then one on the other. And then on that wood stain, once it was done drying, I came back in with a really tiny fine tip brush and I'm just gonna hand paint on these cute little ferns. I thought this would be so pretty and so delicate, but yeah, a little surprise. I like little things like this on my home decor because it you know, catches your eye and it looks so cute on a shelf. Then over on the house, because there are five family members, I'm gonna put five for the sambles. And once I had that painted, I went and made one more little heart. I thought, why not? Let's put one on the other house on the door. And I painted that little heart pink. I just think that this is such a cute, darling little touch. Now the last part, again, you can skip this if this is not your thing, but I really do like a little bit of a distressing because I just feel like I have a lot of white creamy walls and it makes things just stand out more. For this DIY, we are going to take some florals, some twine, and then one of the rings from the 3D wreath form, the ball that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And we are going to cut off some of the roses. You want to make sure you're cutting off the wire part because this is so easy to get this look. I am going to take one of those roses that has the wire in it. It's easier if you just put your forearm on it and then not struggle with the plants to the side like I just did. And then I'm just gonna simply twist it right on there and it stays on really, really well. I'm just twisting and twisting until I get it into the position that I like. And then I'm gonna continue to repeat that with all of the other ones that I cut as well, just twisting them right onto the wreath. Once I had those on, I'm gonna take a piece of twine and the ferns that are on that particular flower from the Dollar Tree, the roses. I'm taking this fern stem and I'm taking some twine and I'm just wrapping that on there because this is going to pop off. So I wanted to make sure it was secured on there really well. Plus I wanted it to dangle down on the sides just like it's looking right now. 
Then I'm gonna go back in with some roses. I pulled out the wires from them so it has the nub of the flower's bottom part, and I'm just going to snug that down in there. It fits nicely in with the fern and all the twine. Flip it over and glue it on the back side to make sure everything is nice and secure. And this is the easiest project and has such a big impact. And then the last thing, I just added in a couple of roses into the centers and it was done. This last project is a bonus project. Now you are going to need two packs of this particular tongue depressor stick. And you can pick these up at Walmart too. They also have them at other craft stores like Joann's and Michael's. But you're gonna need two of them. And I wanted to add this last one in here to show you what you can do with popsicle sticks. I feel like I've been saying throughout this video, popsicle sticks are so fun to use and you can build so many cool things with them. So here I am, I cut off the bottom part of it and I created 18 of them in a row and we're gonna repeat that again. Now I don't know if you all have seen, but there are those really cute game boards for tic-tac-toe. They are crazy expensive and with $3 because we're gonna use the wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree and two packs of these sticks. For $3, you can make the most amazing thing versus paying $45, $50 for a game board for tic-tac-toe. I just think that this is so cool. So you can see here, I've done 18 across on the top and the bottom, and then I came back in and did three rows, and I'm piecing it together. Now at this point, it does look like a little bit of a mess, but I promise when it comes to the end, it is going to look so farmhouse adorable. It has that shiplap look to it that we all love so much. Well, I know some of us are not shiplap farmhouse lovers, but for the people that do love it, this is totally the project to try. So you can see on the back, I put all of those pieces there to make sure everything was nice and strong and sturdy holding together. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut off all of the rounded ends. I decided to save this part because I wanted to make sure that line was nice and straight to the box to make it look like a box so it's not crooked at any point. Now I'm gonna take some more of my sticks, cut off both of those rounded edges, and I'm going to create a border around. Now this part looks a little weak and chintzy, but hold on, I'm gonna show you how to strengthen it where it's gonna turn into a legit box by the end of this project. So here I am, I'm adding some glue to the bottom, then to this side, and then I'm just coming in to miter, not miter, but just to bring the corners together. And then I'm just making sure it's nice and straight before I let it go. Now we're gonna come into the middle and we're gonna start framing out those little boxes that you need to be able to play tic-tac-toe. Now you're gonna notice that the popsicle stick's not long enough to go all the way across. So I created an extra piece here, and that's okay because we're actually going to fill that piece in and then come around on the other side and fill that in. So each siding of each wall is gonna be doubled up, so it's gonna be really strong. And then here I am adding some hot glue, and I'm just nestling that right down in there. And then you can see at this point that I came back in with those longer pieces and added those in. Now I'm coming back in and I'm keeping my hearts there because I wanna make sure the boxes are going to fit the size that I need. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that it's nice and snug, but not too tight that you can't put it in there. And then here I am, I'm showing that I'm doubling up the stick. And you can see at this point, all of my walls have been doubled up. And then I'm gonna add some more across the bottom and then on the sides and then slide that down into the slot that it needs to go in. At this point, you can start to see it's starting to take its structure. And again, $3 versus $45, $50 that I've seen these boxes going for. Now I wanna strengthen up the outside wall like I talked about earlier, so I'm gonna double that up as well. So here I am, I'm going around, and I'm just adding on a second layer and then at this point, I really wanna let the glue have time to just kinda of sit there and everything just kinda of form together. So I switched over to my little X's and I laid them at the cross points of the box and then glued them to make sure that they're nice and wide and chunky that will fit the box. And now I'm cutting them down so that they will fit inside of the box. 
So here you can see that they look so cute together. All right, at this point, I forgot to show you all, so I'm showing you right now, but I came back in with my hot glue and I'm just adding glue into the corners to make them really strong and to keep the walls sturdy and staying in place. Then I painted everything white twice to make sure it has a nice, pretty coat of white on it. And while that's drying, I moved back over to my little X's. I am taking some twine and simply just wrapping around it all up each joint, twirling back down around, and then I'm coming into the middle and then just wrapping it until I can't see any more of the stick. I liked that the sticks were kind of popping out at the very top of the twine at the ends of the X's. I thought that was cute. It didn't bother me. If you want to go over and, you know, fix that, you can do that too. And then here I am, I'm patching in those holes on the wooden hearts with some wood putty, sanding it down when it's nice and dry, and then I came back in with that coral pink color that I just love so much. And I painted them all on both sides with the coral pink color. Then to clean up the outside of the box and to make it look store-bought, I came back in with the lace ribbon that's in the kit for this month. And I'm just going to tap it along the sides to finish that look. And at the end, I'm just going to cut it off and make sure it's nice and flat and clean looking. And there you have it. You have created yourself a tic-tac-toe game box to put on your table. And it is so adorable for $3. Thanks so much for watching this video today. I hope you felt inspired. If you're interested in the kit of the month, I'm going to link that video down below in my description box and there will be another one coming out this next month. So keep a lookout for it. And don't forget to go and check out Jessica's video that is also linked down below in my description box. Leave a comment down below to let me know which was your favorite project. And if you haven't already, do click the subscribe button. I'd love for you to stick around. I have so many fun things coming up this year. Until the next episode, bye friends.